Jaeger climbs to 56,000 feet in less than two minutes. And he does it, the first human to crack the sound barrier. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. NASP, the National Aerospace Plane, the next giant step in America's aerospace legacy. A single stage to orbit, trans-atmospheric vehicle, which is capable of taking off and landing horizontally, going to orbit in a single stage, and trans-circling the globe at hypersonic speeds. The National Aerospace Plane is the focus for reinventing America's leadership. The year is 2000, and you are a passenger on board the NASP. Here's what might happen on a typical flight. The National Aerospace Plane leaves from a conventional airport. It zooms through the clouds, going through Mach 1, the speed of sound. At 80,000 feet, it passes through the ozone layer with no disturbance and achieves Mach 25. It is traveling five miles per second. First, the NASP delivers a satellite into space orbit. Now, it continues on to deliver industrial technicians to a commercial space station. Mission complete, it deorbits with the retro rockets and then descends towards its final destination on Earth. The National Aerospace Plane is a technology demonstration and development program. It started about three years ago. And in two years, we'll make a decision to fly what we call an experimental vehicle, which will be termed the X-30. It brings together over 5,000 people across the United States, working in over 40 states. It combines government laboratories and industrial and academic research organizations to produce a vehicle like this. Never before have so many organizations worked together for one national goal. It will be our way to get into space at low cost. It will allow the popularization of space in a routine fashion. It will allow us to get into hypersonic speeds and space operation in a routine way, using airplanes as opposed to rocket ships. Hypersonic airplanes look different from normal airplanes. They don't need much of a wing, and so this airplane has very small wings. The engines are on the underside of the vehicle, and the air is compressed before going into the engines and exhausted out the tail end. But it is an airplane. Although the United States program to develop NASP is a major program. There are many other countries that are involved in the race to develop a national aerospace plane. Japan has a major effort that's underway. The Soviet unions have a lot of capability in this area. And there are at least four countries in Europe that are actively pursuing the development of hypersonic and aerospace planes. We need to keep moving on this program if we're to maintain the leadership in aerospace vehicles. What's on the line here is America's technical leadership. Although another country could be able to produce this vehicle, we can do it, and we can do it fast. It's been 80 years since we Americans have developed the first airplane, and about 40 years since we flew supersonically, again by an American. In the 80 years since the Wright brothers, we've come a long way. The national aerospace plane will take us to the final frontier, where the sky is no longer the limit. With the commitment of the American people, striving as a national team, we can make a difference like we did by putting a man on the moon. We can turn this possibility into a reality.